Hello and welcome to another fun-packed physics video, this time on projectiles. It's a topic that many pupils find tricky, so don't be afraid to watch it more than once and look out for the video of example questions. So I'll start off with something you've maybe seen in class. In this demonstration, a piece of equipment drops a ball bearing straight down and at the same time a second ball bearing is projected horizontally like this. This dotted line shows the path of the ball bearing that falls vertically downwards, and this dotted line shows the path of the ball bearing that's projected horizontally. The important thing to note is that both ball bearings take the same time to fall to the ground, so the vertical and horizontal motions of a projectile are independent. The fact that the ball bearing on the right was projected horizontally had no effect on the time it took for it to fall to the ground, since it took the same time to fall as the ball bearing on the left, which fell straight down. Now, let's imagine that both ball bearings take exactly 5 seconds to fall to the ground, and that the ball bearing on the right is projected with a horizontal speed of 25 metres per second. If we ignore air resistance, which is something we usually do with these questions in National 5 Physics, then after 1 second the horizontal speed will still be 25 metres per second. After 2 seconds it will be 25 metres per second, then 25 metres per second again at 3 seconds, and 4 seconds after being projected. Any guesses what its horizontal speed will be after 5 seconds, just before it hits the ground? If you said 25 meters per second, then well done you. So remember that horizontally, a projectile has a constant speed. If we drew a graph of a projectile's horizontal speed against time, then it would look like this. A horizontal line with a constant value of 25 meters per second. Remember that that value is just made up. When you're answering projectile questions, the projectile's horizontal speed will no doubt be different. Since the area under a speed time graph gives us distance, the area under this graph of horizontal speed against time must give us the horizontal distance travelled by the projectile, also known as the range. What about the projectile's vertical speed though? How does that change with time? Since it was projected horizontally, the initial vertical speed of the ball bearing on the right must be 0 meters per second. That's also true for the ball bearing on the left that falls straight down. How about after one second? Well, since the acceleration due to gravity on Earth is 9.8 ms to the minus 2, its vertical speed will have increased from 0 to 9.8 meters per second in one second. Over the next second, the vertical speed will again increase by 9.8 meters per second to 19.6 meters per second. How about three seconds after being projected? I'll give you a second to think about it. Hopefully you've been shouting at a number, and that number was 29.4 meters per second. That's just three lots of 9.8, since vertically the projectile's speed increases by 9.8 meters per second every second. On Earth, of course. If you've been wondering what the green circles are on the left-hand side of the screen, they're just to indicate that, at all times, the two ball bearings are always at the same vertical position, since they take the same time to fall to the ground. Anyway, back to the vertical speed of the projectile on the right, as well as the one on the left. What will its vertical speed be 4 seconds after being projected? The answer is 4 times 9.8, which is 39.2 meters per second. Finally, just before it hits the ground, 5 seconds after being projected, the vertical speed will be 5 times 9.8, which is 49 meters per second. To sum up, a projectile on Earth and ignoring air resistance has a constant vertical acceleration of 9.8 ms to the minus 2, or meters per second per second. The graph I'm going to show you here is very important, as you'll see later, since it can be used to calculate the vertical height that the projectile has fallen. For the projectile shown in our example, the vertical speed increases from 0 to 49 meters per second in a time of 5 seconds. Remember again that the area under a speed time graph gives us the distance travelled. So the area under this graph of vertical speed in its time must give us the vertical distance travelled by the projectile. In other words, the height it was dropped from. Let's get rid of that graph and move our diagram to the side so that I can go over the types of question you might get asked. If you'd like to see me go over some example questions on projectiles, then look out for the video that accompanies this one. Link in the description. One thing you might get asked to calculate is the horizontal range of the projectile which is how far it moves horizontally from its starting position to where it hits the ground. 
you'll often get asked to calculate the height of the projectile was dropped from, which is obviously the vertical distance it travels from its start position to where it hits the ground. To do that, you'll first need to calculate the projectile's vertical speed when it hits the ground, which I'll explain in a minute. First off, to calculate the projectile's horizontal range, we can use this equation from the relationship sheet. Distance equals speed times time. It's important to remember though, that to calculate the projectile's horizontal distance, or range, we need to multiply its horizontal speed by the time it takes the projectile to travel from its starting position to where it hits the ground. In the example I've got here, that would be the horizontal speed of 25 meters per second multiplied by a time of five seconds, the time taken for the projectile to fall to the ground. Now in some questions, we're told the projectile's horizontal range and the time it takes to fall to the ground and we're asked to calculate its horizontal speed. All we do here is rearrange the equation like so. Finally, you could be given the projectile's horizontal range and its horizontal speed and be asked to find the time of travel, how long it takes to move horizontally over the full horizontal range. In that case, we'd rearrange the equation like this and divide the horizontal range by the projectile's horizontal speed. If you're on the ball, then you'll have realized that this is also equal to the time the projectile takes to fall vertically to the ground from its starting position. Next up, calculating the projectile's vertical speed as it hits the ground. To do that, we use this equation. Remember that projectiles have a vertical acceleration and on Earth, the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 ms to the minus two. Another important thing to remember is that when projected horizontally, its initial vertical speed u will be zero meters per second. T is the time taken for the projectile to fall from its starting position to the ground, and V is what we're trying to calculate, the projectile's vertical speed as it hits the ground. If this looks tricky, then remember to watch the examples video to watch me go through a few example questions. Last, and by no means least, now that we know the projectile's vertical speed as it hits the ground, we can calculate the height it was dropped from. In other words, the vertical distance traveled by the projectile. To do that, we can sketch a graph of the projectile's vertical speed against time. Don't worry, it doesn't have to be too neat. And unless you're asked otherwise, there's no need for graph paper or a ruler. So in our example, the projectile took five seconds to fall to the ground. And at that point, its vertical speed had increased from zero meters per second to 49 meters per second. Our graph then would look like this, a straight diagonal line. As I said before, the area under a graph of vertical speed against time gives us the vertical distance traveled by the projectile, which is what we're trying to find. In this example, which is a projectile taking five seconds to fall to the ground, the area under the graph is half times the base times the height, which is half times five times 49. That works out to be 122.5 meters or 120 meters to two significant figures. Work it out yourself just to make sure. If this video has been of use to you, then remember to drop a handful of likes all over it. And if you can be bothered, why not subscribe to the channel as well? And remember to watch that video of example questions. See you next time.